Jesus said to you, you, believe that I am healed, you'll die in your sins. You better get this revelation. And once you get it, you better never lose it. Because if you lose it, you're lost. Praise the Lord. You need the revelation that Jesus is the only true and living God. He said, this is life eternal. To know thee the only true God. And the Son who's out of sin. So, Jesus was God in the Spirit. But the man was the Son of God. In April 1906, revival broke out in a converted warehouse in the industrial district of Los Angeles. According to the LA Times, a new sect of fanatics was breaking loose, breathing strange utterances and mouthing a creed which it would seem no mortal could understand. It went on, devotees of the weird doctrine practiced the most fanatical rites, preached the wildest theories and worked themselves into a state of mad excitement. But to others, the very atmosphere of heaven had come down. The leader of the fledgling apostolic faith mission at 312 Azusa Street was a one-eyed black man named William Seymour. This unassuming son of former slaves began preaching that God wanted to fill people with the Holy Spirit and that just as at the first Pentecost, they would speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. At a time when strict segregation was the norm in America, men and women of all races prayed and sang together. In a short time, fire fell from heaven, and within weeks the building could not contain the hundreds of people who came to experience the power of God. They spoke and sang in tongues, found a new depth of prayer, and saw healings and miracles. Today, 600 million Pentecostal and Charismatic Christians around the world trace their roots back to this one revival led by a 36-year-old African-American who was obedient to God in the face of prejudice, opposition and misunderstanding and ensuring that Azusa Street will not be forgotten. Shortly after the Azusa Revival began in 1906 in Los Angeles, it took no time for the formation of a ministerial alliance to develop. From within the confines of the old Azusa Mission, the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World was established during the year 1906. At the beginning, it was a loose-leaf fellowship of ministerial endeavor, giving apostolic ministers a sense of unity and belonging to something where common Ideas were shared among the constituency of the movement. The PAW was Trinitarian in its theology during its early history and remained Trinity until the conversion of Elder G.T. Haywood to the Oneness View in 1915. In 1915, Brother Glenn Cook came to Indianapolis, Indiana with a message for Elder Haywood concerning baptism in Jesus' name. At first, Haywood refused to espouse the message, but one day while riding on a streetcar in Indianapolis, the voice of God spoke to him, saying, Brother Haywood, walk in the light while you have it, lest a greater darkness come upon you. He swiftly departed the streetcar and had Brother Cook rebaptize him in Jesus' name. 456 of the members of Christ's temple followed his example, making it an overnight sensation and thus becoming the largest oneness church in the country. The PAW soon followed G.T. Haywood in his new theological position, accepting the oneness of God, thus making it the first recognized oneness organization in North America. Haywood traveled extensively worldwide and all over the country and was very instrumental in many people, including the Urshans, Timothy, and David Urshan, seen here, the brothers of Andrew Urshan, and promoting the oneness doctrine all over the world and did many, many souls. He wrote many songs, and one of the greatest songs he wrote was, I See a Crimson Stream of Blood, which uh, has been recorded many times. <laughs>
Died July 22, 2000, Bishop Morris Ellis Golder left behind a powerful apostolic legacy and a thriving congregation, Grace Apostolic Church in Indianapolis, Indiana, which he founded in 1953. 11th and Senate was the epicenter of apostolic revival in the city of Indianapolis. There, the Golder family was blessed to sit under the visionary leadership of Bishop G.T. Haywood, who distinguished himself in the early Pentecostal as a theologian, as a And then we have record of in our Bible, and made that woman to believe that in town, it wasn't their environment that brought them where they were, it was something that was wrong on the inside. In the scripture that we read this morning, behold, I was shaping in iniquity, in sin, did my mother conceive me, I am born, was born a sinner, even for I could walk, talk, think for myself, just as sinful as a baby could be, and I grew up, and so did you, you just like I am, grew up a sinner. And the thing that causes the wrong is that something that is in these bodies, amen, that has a bent toward evil. Ah, but I thank God for Jesus. I thank him that he came, amen, to loose us from the bondage of corruption. He came to loose us from sin that will not allow us to live like we want to live. And this man found in Jesus that freedom, amen, from the bondage of sin. And he shouts, there is now, therefore, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. And not only in them who walk, I like that, who walk, and the word walk takes up all of your activity, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's not all he says. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, the child of God uh, that has freedom in Christ is freer than anybody that lives in this world. Yeah. <laughs> 
saying that right. You ought to say with enthusiasm. Who died for you? Jesus. Who shed his blood for you? Jesus. Who got up on the third day for you? Jesus. Who's coming back for you? Jesus. Who gave you the Holy Ghost? Jesus. Once a sinner far from Jesus, I was perishing with cold. And the blessed Savior heard me when I cried. Oh, he threw his arms around me and he led me to the fold. And I'm living on the hallelujah side. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Let the hallelujah roll. Let me bring my Savior praises far and wide. For I opened up to heaven all of the windows of my soul. And I'm living on the Side. Oh, glory be to Jesus, let the hallelujah roll, help me to ring my same praises far and wide, for I've opened up toward heaven all of the windows of my soul, and I'm living on the hallelujah side. But then it was explained to me the name. They said to me, Father is not a name. Son is not a name. Holy Ghost. But the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is Jesus. Keep that in the highest name here. And, and you know, I asked the question tonight. The question is, are you baptized in the name of the titles? Or are you baptized in the titles of the name? Are you baptized in the name of the titles or are you baptized in the titles of the name? See, we know that the power and authority is in the name of the titles. The power and authority is not in the titles of the name. I've been baptized in the name of the titles. Hallelujah. And the name is Jesus. We know that the name of the titles by Isaiah 9 and six it says, and she shall bring forth a son unto us. The son is given unto us. A, a child is a son. A child is given unto us. The son is born. The government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, isn't it? Mighty God and Everlasting Father. So we see that all the titles that are mentioned in Matthew 28 19 is describing the son that is given. Yes. Matthew 1 21 tells us the name of the son. His name will be called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Somebody here, somebody here, somebody here. It is the greatest experience. Is it a great experience my sister? Hallelujah. My brother, is it a great experience to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus' name? Amen. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. The altars are open. Highest name. Greatest name. Come, come, come. I'm so glad that I've been buried in His name. No other name. Hallelujah. Come on, we have a revival. I'm so glad that I've been baptized in his name. Can I get some singers to help me out? Highest name. Oh, greatest name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I've been there in his name. That's right, bring them, bring them. Come on. I'm so glad that I've been back in this name. Listen. There are people all over the world baptized in Jesus' name. They receive a revelation that set the word of God a 
flame He has opened up the mysteries That's forever has been closed All because they've been baptized In Jesus' name Listen to the second verse here. Oh, if you're looking for the Father you will find him in the sun. Why are you searching for the Holy Ghost? Don't you know all three are one? He's salvation for the sinner man. And when he comes back, all of us he will claim. Oh, because we have been baptized in his name. Hallelujah. Oh, highest name, greatest name, greatest name. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I've been buried in His name. Hallelujah! Come on, sweetest name, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. No other name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! repent and be baptized every 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 one of you in the name of Jesus Christ now when you obey this commandment your life will never 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 be the same oh 